So finally, a team drafts Tyler Shelvin. I think he's a good player. I'm surprised he fell this far, if I'm being totally honest. I think there's a lot to like about Shelvin, uh, especially... I just think that, you know, his size is, he's just just ginormous human, which we're going to get into the film study and talk about uh, how that works. But, you know, him next to DJ Reader with that kind of size, uh, I, I saw, you know, Brett Coleman tweeted about like that on a goal line situation is like just, you know, that's going to be tough to run through. He ha There's a lot to like about him. I think this is kind of a steal. I think he could easily be a, a starting defensive tackle I had a first round grade on him that's how high I am on him so uh, I think that getting him in the fourth absolute steal good job by Cincinnati to get someone who I think can absolutely uh, help out their defense which was an issue last year so yeah uh, let's jump into the film study and talk about what I like about him as a player so we'll start off with this one. That's where he is on the field. Uh, he's going to be going up one-on-one -on -one against the, it's going to be the right guard who's going to try and block him right here. Uh, emphasis on try. Really the main thing I like about him is his first step paired with his just insane size. You know, sitting around 350. I think he's a little bit lighter, around like 345. But the first step paired with that is really what's going to be impressive. And you'll see it on this play. Watch him just shove that guard completely back. And he's actually going to even be able to move enough to kind of help try and get into the play. Again, you're not going to see him like moving at, like he's Aaron Donald or something. You shouldn't be expecting that. A lot of what he does is he's just a big guy who clogs things up in the middle. But you know what? That's a very valuable role and he does it pretty well. Like, this one's probably a better example of showing really what kind of value he's going to bring, where he's going to be double teamed on this play. It's going to be the center and the right guard. So, a lot of what a defensive tackle has to do, especially when you're a tackle like Shelvin, who isn't going to come into play on the passing game too much, a little bit, and we can get into that in a second. But when it comes to, you know, you're drafting him to be a run stopper, what you want him to be able to do is to take on two guys. And... Really, if you t have to, you know, if a team has to double you, you've already won. You've already done your job well because, yeah, getting double teamed, that's, that means that it's freeing stuff up for everyone else. So you've done your job just by having a second guy try and block you. However, obviously, it can be done better if not only does a second guy, you know, have to block you, but if you don't get moved away from that, that's really how you can thrive. And especially for, again, for a big guy like Shelvin. That's what you want him to be able to do. So right when this play starts, you know, this is about as good of hand placement for Florida as they could ask for. I mean, this is perfectly where they want to be. The guard is doing a great job of blocking Shelvin exactly with the proper angle that you want to block him at, which doesn't always happen. You know, running games, things get weird. This, this situation doesn't always happen. But what's going to be incredible is you're going to really see his strength on this play and see how hard it is to move him even when you have two guys. Watch him not get moved at all. And in fact, he even actually comes in and makes this tackle, which is wild. So yeah, I mean, he's just someone who, again, the size is a key, a key factor. I probably, you know, you can't talk too much about that. But also the fact that he can, you know, make a tackle and he does have the footwork to get over there. Both of that stuff, you know, really impressive. And also when you do that, Typically, guys like to double team a defensive tackle and then have someone else come up and block a linebacker. Well, now, because he's taking on two guys, you can't do that, freeze someone else up. So, a lot of value there. Let's talk about this play. This play really will get you excited about him because, okay, so it's a third down and one. You see where he is on the screen. So, that's where he is. He's lined up right against the center right here. And I feel like kind of that's where his best you know, role is going to be. You're going to want to put him against the center. And again, it reminds me a bit of a Vita Vea type where what you do is you have, you know, what Tampa Bay did a lot was have Vea line up against the center. And then you're in this just tr tough situation of what do you do? You have this guy in Tyler Shelvin, who's, you know, much bigger than your center, probably has like uh, 40 pounds on your center. You can't really just let him block him one-on-one, -on -one, but then do you have to double every single time well, great now the other three defensive linemen on your team can get one-on-one -on -one matchups so that's a huge advantage but not just that because if you leave him one-on-one -on -one against the center Shelvin can't just win with power there's other ways he can win and that's kind of what makes him special to me that what makes him that's what makes him much more interesting than just a traditional nose tackle watch this swim move where he pulls off a swim move and even shoves a half back out of the way before the ball is thrown before he can get there it was a quick pass not his fault but uh you know listen it ended up being a touchdown regardless i'm going to show it a couple times just because it you know it moves quickly and it's kind of a hard angle to see so just make sure you get it sorry i know guys get uh i know too many replays can get annoying so i won't 
spend too long on it, but really good play from Shelvin. This one's another example of what I'm talking about. So it's one-on-one -on -one against the center. And again, that's the kind of situation that LSU is is trying to use with him. And I do think that he's the kind of guy where ideally you put him against the center and you blitz, you get those one-on-one -on -one matchups and he'll absolutely basically mean that, hey, for a quarterback, you can't step up in the pocket, which is a big deal, by the way, because when there's edge rushers running around the side as a quarterback, your natural reaction is to step up in the pocket. But when there's pressure up front, now you can't do that, but you're kind of screwed, and you might end up trying to run to the outside and running yourself into pressure, which makes things easier for, again, the entire defensive lineman, not just him. But anyways, what he's going to end up doing on this play is it's going gonna, it's gonna to be all footwork. That's really what you want to see. Watch this first step to get to a certain side, and then you're just not going to be able to block him at that point. Once you once he gets a little bit of an angle, he's just bigger than you and stronger than you. Yes, especially in college, but in the NFL, it will translate. Strength, size, those are the things that translate to the NFL, which is why I'm so high on him. I want to talk about this one now. So it's going to be a double team, similar to what I talked about earlier. But again, something I mentioned there was oftentimes on a double team, one of those offensive linemen is going to want to get off that double team to block someone else. And that's what's going to happen on this play. Watch. So, you know, it, it's, it's a handoff. And you see at this point, Shelvin, I mean, yes, there is a chance he could come in and make a play. Chances are, though, that, you know, at this point, you can, you got to trust that you can block him away when you have two guys. The issue is that 61 there for Florida, he's going to want to get up to block a linebacker, which, uh, spoiler alert, he's actually going to do that and miss the linebacker, so it doesn't matter. But that's what he's going to try and do. However, there's an issue when you do that. Watch how Shelvin, once the double team stops, he is able to then just reach out and make the tackle because, a yes, there is now a linebacker in the area because of the missed block by 61, but also just because he has the footwork to do so and he's strong enough that he's really hard to block one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, so that's kind of, again... It's a rare breed in the NFL. They don't, you know, you don't see guys like this very often that come out. And so I kind of think that, like, if this is someone that you want, if this is the type of player you want on your team, well, you kind of have to draft him this year because the chances are you're not going to see one in 2022 or 2023. You might, but you probably won't. One of these guys, you know, these guys don't come around too often. So I'd say when you get an opportunity to, make the most of it. So yeah, that's why I'm a, a big fan of his and I'm looking forward to seeing how his career goes. Uh, so yeah, that's what I think. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. What are your thoughts on this pick? Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.